All right, uh, what do we do with uh, this one? All right, I'll K6. take that one. So, Paisley tie differential. I was between uh, Desmoplastic Trichoap versus the top of a MAC, but I think I'm leaning more towards Desmoplastic Trichoap. Yeah, I think that's very fair. That it's the Paisley tie. It could be tri Desmoplastic Trichoap, could be MAC. You could also think of, of a basal cell. Also, particularly, I would be a little... It doesn't... It, to me, I, I thought the same, that this looks like probably a desmoplastic trichoap, but I'm, if I don't see the base of the lesion and I see a shave of what I think is a desmoplastic trichoap, I personally will usually add the comment to please do a small excision so I can see the base of the lesion. Because to me, I find that the most useful thing to rule out microcystic adnexal carcinoma, MAC, is to see the base. How deep does it go? And oftentimes in MAC, you're looking for sweat duct differentiation, but it can be very hard to see in the superficial aspect of a MAC. You get these thin basaloid cords. The sweat duct differentiation is not always very obvious, particularly at the superficial aspect. You get keratin microcysts in both desmoplastic trichoap and MAC. So I feel like looking down deep, it helps me to see if there's actual duct formation and also how deep the lesion goes. Desmoplastic trichoap is usually confi confined to the dermis, and MAC usually invades deeper than the dermis, although I've seen exceptions. Um, and uh, you can also, the one immunostain I find helpful here is looking at cytokeratin 20, which will highlight scattered Merkel cell, passenger Merkel cells that like to hang out in benign hair follicle tumors, but are usually missing from MAC or basal cell carcinoma. So that can be kind of helpful. Also, there's a bonus finding here. Look, there's some little round cells in the background. It's a nevus. And there have actually been uh, some papers describing an association of, of nevi, particularly blue nevus, if I recall, with desmoplastic trichoap for some strange reason. They seem to coexist. I do use a little bit more caution in a patient that is old and sun damaged like this. Um, it, before, you know, on a transected shave, just saying, ah, it's a benign hair follicle thing. I want to be really sure I'm not missing an infiltrative basal on someone's nose or a microcystic adnexal carcinoma, both of which will need um, more aggressive uh, treatment, of course. So I find this differential um, of MAC versus desmoplastic trichoap to be very challenging and uh, still a struggle in practice for me. And I think for many people. Dr. Gardner, just a quick question yes. on that. As far as the stroma goes, um, does does that help you differentiate between the Paisley tie differential? Does the stroma help differentiate between the Paisley tie differential? Uh, to some extent, stroma is helpful. I particularly find it helpful in other follicular tumors, like versus basal versus regular trichoap. But in the um, in the setting of MAC, desmoplastic trichoap, infiltrative basal, syringoma, they all have alteration of the background stroma and kind of a sclerotic stroma. And I feel like you don't often like uh, you don't often see really helpful features. Um, papillary mesenchymal bodies, which are a really useful feature for regular trichoepithelioma and sometimes trichoblastoma, in my experience, you don't usually see them in desmoplastic trichoepithelioma. So to me, you know, if we look at say other, let's take trichelemoma for example, trichelemoma and desmoplastic trichelemoma, I think of those as the same tumor, just a different morphologic pattern. I think, on the other hand, though, of desmoplastic trichoap as totally separate and probably unrelated to regular tri trichoaps. They look so different, and to me, the reason is when I see a desmoplastic trichoap, I almost never see anything that looks like real, classic, regular, conventional trichoepithelioma next to it. Whereas, like, desmoplastic trichelomoma usually has a background of normal trichelomoma. So I kind of feel like this is an unrelated tumor. Uh, from regular trichoap, and therefore all of the stroma tricks that work for regular trichoap versus basal don't work so well here. Um, the one thing I would say is like in distinguishing basal and syringoma, I feel like those two are usually easier to get out of the differential, whereas DTE and MAC are very hard because they can look essentially identical on a small biopsy. Basils usually are going to have some nests that look more like regular basal with palisading, clefting, mucin. Not always, but I feel like oftentimes you'll see some areas that look more like regular basal, or you'll see a combination of a superficial or a nodular pattern with the infiltrative pattern, and that's really helpful to favor basal cell. Syringoma, almost always you're going to see obvious, multiple, clear-cut sweat ducts in even a superficial biopsy of syringoma, whereas that's very rare to see in my experience in a MAC. So I feel like syringomas are usually the easiest one to diagnose because you'll see nice tadpole shapes with nice ducts in them. And if you see multiple ducts on a shave, my money would be on syringoma. Again, there are rare exceptions, 
but that's what I would vote for if I was if I was trying to decide. Thank you. You're welcome. And I've got some videos about some of those entities on my YouTube channel if you want to see some more examples because it's a constant struggle. And again, there are not any real easy answers here.